<laughs> you see, this is a very important conversation. It is very, very important. Okay. You see, in my village, I come from uh, Uromi. Uh, my village in Uromi, actually my my quarter, because there are several villages in Amedo, it's called Amedo, but in Amedo, there are several quarters. So, um, near my place, there is um, a masquerade that we call Ugbonomudu. Let me explain to you first, because it might sound very big, the, the name, no? I'm smiling because I think I know, I, I'm pretty sure it's one of my favorites on earth. I love it. <laughs> what you? Ah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. When U- 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 discovers this masquerade, you know, <laughs> it'll be global. But go ahead, man. Go. Okay. So this masquerade is feared. Okay, first of all, the name, Ubonomondu. It will mean that the killer of the big heart. That is, okay. the big heart, it is saying that when you say you are, you are the biggest, you are the toughest. Maybe, for example, you are an evil person. You say you can kill any person. They wait for this masquerade because it's going to, it's going to kill you. So what it basically means is that when this when there is something that is too tough for people to resolve, a too a riddle that is too tough, maybe there is a thief or any person that is too wicked that is, that terrorizes the community and is brought before this masquerade, you are supposed to tell the truth because if you lie, you are going to die. Now this masquerade usually comes out once in a while. You near you don't see it often. In our place, masquerade is a dance that we do almost like, uh, I think, every 14 days, every seven days, more like, no, at a time. Of course, everybody wanted to see the masquerade, no, because it, the fun, because there is the masquerade that dance with the people, the women running up. It's, it's a lot of fun. You can't even describe it. I tried to describe it in one of my books, talking about this masquerade. And, of course, a lot of people like it for that. So, what I'm... Try to drive out. Okay, now, one of the reasons why this masquerade will come out is that either there is something that is affecting the community and the elders of all the elders in the village of Amedokia, they are meeting in Okogwe. Okogwe is where the elderly people really meet. Maybe, say for example, the time that the rain is supposed to fall, the rain doesn't fall. And there is a suspect that maybe something is responsible for that. Maybe evil people might be responsible for that, for example. This is also how I describe it in my book. Mm-hmm. Then there will, there will be the gathering of the, all the people in Amedokia, in Okogele. Now, this masquerade will come out. And when it come out, it's going to make a pronouncement that whoever is holding, if, it, if somebody is holding the raid, that why it didn't fall for any reason. We're talking of African spirituality now, okay? It will make a pronouncement that they must release the rain. As history has it, that day rain will fall. Yeah. No month from that day, yeah. that night. That is how it happened. I cannot explain. I cannot explain it. But that is how it happened. Yeah. So talking of masquerade, talking of the history, talking of the culture, the spirituality of the people. Do you have something? I don't know. Maybe I don't know what I to say similar or or things like this also among your people. I don't know what what you what you want to add to that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's a lot of those. Um, <laughs> that's why I was one of the reasons I was saying that if it's discovered by the world, it'll go global because ah, the thing works. <laughs> but um, <laughs> the um, um, I mean, y- yes. The, the the short answer is yes. Uh, there's a, I, one of my videos too, I talk about, I, I did a, a video talking about Debias where I'm explaining, you know, what a Debia is and everything that goes into the idea of becoming a Debia. And, um, like for example, if a person feels that they have some type of spiritual calling, um, how did our ancestors approach this, this, this calling or this thing? Cause there's a lot of people today. I, they, I talk to them all the time that have the exact same thing our ancestors were describing. Like, no, the thing you said in the video is 100% what's happening to me. In fact, this, 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 and that. Yeah, so I made this video specifically for them, uh, but for everybody, of course. And in this video, I told the story. And you can even go watch this on uh, BBC. It's on BBC. You know, they had this young, you know, researcher, you know, who was going to go and prove if rainmakers were real back home, right? I think, I can't remember which one of the BBC subsidiaries it was, and he goes there and he meets this old man, and you know, you see the man's face, you know this guy that is, he's no joke, he's not playing. <laughs> you understand? That he has made this happen 
more than a thousand times in his very long life. And you, you just see it in his face, you understand? Like, he was just... And so the, um, the the guy says, okay, well, they say you're able to make rain, da 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 you know, he's doing his thing. And there's a little sarcasm in how he's talking. And the, 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 the Divya then begins his work, right? Uh, Divya, Igwe, Sky Divya, right? He then begins his work, right? And next thing you know, it starts raining right there on camera, right there, right there. You understand? And, you know, I get the sense that the reporter was disappointed. (laughs) (laughs) Bunk something. And he went there and the thing debunked him. And so the young man then goes, um, oh, well, I checked my forecast and uh, it says it was going to rain anyway. And then it's okay, then why did you choose that day? Come back on in dry season and talk to this man. You'll see what happens. So again, one of the things about our spirituality is that it is not a matter of what somebody believes. These things are something somebody has made happen. And the reason I say that is because there's a belief that we have our Rishi in our place, right? We have like a shrine in our place. If you go to a shrine and the, you, if, if the person who is holding the shrine or who's working there says that this shrine could do this, 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 and that, and that thing doesn't happen, you stop going. And the community stops going. If that thing doesn't, if, if, you, if you claim you can do this thing, it stops going. There's no obligation to believe in a rainmaker. That's why there's several. There's no obligation to believe in a devia. That's why there's several. And the ones that you find people going to again and again and again are the ones that said, I'm going to go to this devia because I want to do this. And they go and the thing happens. So it's proof of concept. The things that have certain that are that are still being patronized, especially the ones that are patronized actively, have already proven themselves as a concept, just like with this rainmaker and that type of thing. The community knew why they took him to that man. He's done that thing several times, right? It wasn't that he um, went somewhere and got a certification, and now you're supposed to just believe him and, and that kind of no. He's he he, he, ha- he is that thing because he has done that thing, right? And that's what you find all over Africa, all over. Trust me, before I used to be like, ah, this is nonsense. You know, me in, let's call it 2013, would not believe where I'm at right now, right? And you would say, oh, that's not really that kind of thing. But these things have proven themselves. The ones that don't prove themselves, we drop and we move. We drop and we move. So, yeah, it it just kind of goes with that. Go ahead, though. (laughs) You see... I think that we African, anyway, I think why we are so free is because we have abandoned ourselves. And by law of nature, we are supposed to suffer until we recover ourselves. We first of all need to know who we are, where we are in this world. Because if our ancestors allow us to assess all the benefits that we are supposed to assess after we have abandoned them, it will not be right. right. Until we come back to our root, Embrace who we really are as a people instead of pretending to be European, to be Western. We're supposed to suffer. It is legitimate for Africans to suffer. The only remedy is for us to go back to our origin, know who we are. We must fight for our place in this world. Of course, by fighting, I'm not literally saying that we need, maybe need to take up arms. But if that is what it takes, okay, we can go for it. But what I'm saying is that we must be bold enough to stand on our feet as African, embrace our spirituality, our humanity, our biology, our physiognomy, everything that makes us African, we must embrace it. And when we do that, there is nothing, not even the European can stop us. I believe this 100%. But we cannot stop we cannot fight any person in this world. We don't know who we are. I believe that there are this knowledge. You know, knowledge is power. Okay, knowledge, the, the application of power. There are these powers in Africa that we think they don't work. I want to give you an instance. In the city where I am, which is Verona, there is a, a museum here. This museum is owned by a missionary, uh, the Catholic uh, missionary. And inside this museum, there are lots and lots of artifacts coming from Africa. Of course, 
Of course. Okay. These are missionaries. Yeah. And they have told the African people that these things are evil. Mm. Why do you bring it to your home if they are evil? Are you not supposed to conquer the evil? Right. Why do you bring it to your home? Right. I'm not even talking of the British Museum, the American Metropolitan Museum, British, uh, uh, um, uh, France. Why did they do this to us? Because they are trying from day one to detach us from who we are. Yeah. Because if we know who you are, nothing can stop you. Knowledge really is power. Yes. Yes. One of the things we have to remember is that the one of the primary goals in the colonial experiment was to create customers. Britain was overproducing, right? And it needed customers. And what was it overproducing? It was overproducing clothing, things like that. So in order for me to make customers, because again, I'm making the thing that makes sense to my people, I can try to make the thing that belongs to other people or I can go to those other people and find a way for them to hate the thing that they're wearing and feel value wearing the thing that I'm wearing. 